Welcome or welcome back. My name's Layla and today I'm going to be going over kind of alternate routes into medical school. This is kind of geared towards anyone who didn't get the grades they were expecting to or maybe is worried about what they're going to do if they don't get the grades they need or maybe more mature people who are considering a career change and wanting to go into medicine. There are a lot of options that I didn't know about when I was in high school and you know if I had I might have done something different. So yeah there are a lot of different options that I just wanted to go over so I'm going to explain each one briefly and then I'm going to kind of just give you a few pros and cons, things that you can kind of think about if you're trying to weigh up whether that route is the one for you. And last point before I start, I'm going to put some timestamps in the description for you in case you want to jump around or if you know loads about one of them and you just want to skip it. So yeah, let go. So the first route I want to talk about is to go in as a graduate, i.e. to do another degree first and that's the route I did. I did a four year course in neuroscience which sounds like a lot but I don't regret it at all. Obviously things to consider, the benefits are just endless so you leave with a degree first of all. You're going into medical school with a wealth of knowledge around topics that are relevant so my degree because it was a medical science degree covered a lot of pharmacology, physiology, bits of anatomy. I did my, an anatomy dissertation so I, I even have the fortune of having dissected already. Yeah, you just, you learn so much and by choosing something that you're interested in that's still in the space, you get this like deep dive. You've got life experience so you just do so much when you're at uni. You have the long summers if you decide to do a degree first because only medicine really <laughs> has short summers. Make so many friends because you're there for three or four years depending on where you go. Yeah, I think it's just a really good base to start with. You'll have contemplated medicine a lot more. You'll have learned why it is you actually want to do it and when I was thinking about this even just early on in my degree I didn't actually know properly why I wanted to do medicine and I think that doing a degree first really consolidated that for me and you get to have the uni experience get it out of your system uh, not that you can't do them during medicine but it's just it's a different ball game isn't it you've got a lot more of an intense schedule and stuff like that and I think the most valuable thing for me was that I learned how to learn I wasn't that great at understanding myself when I was 16 17 when I would have been applying to medicine if I had gotten the grades that I had wanted but going in as a graduate I've had four years to kind of work like trial and error work out what works for me, like read up on learning. So yeah, I think I learned a lot about my own study style that works for me and my grades actually improved as I went through the years. I feel like I'm starting medical school on a really good foot. Cons, obviously the time. So this is the longest route probably if you're talking about from high school. You're doing a whole degree so it's not easy. It is difficult but it's really really valuable and you grow. You just grow. <laughs> and then obviously the expense. So if you're doing another degree first First, you're gonna have to think about how you're gonna pay for that and then medicine later. I know that if you go into a graduate entry course it's a lot cheaper but it's extremely competitive. It's it's extremely competitive like the chances of you getting into a graduate entry course are quite slim. <laughs> You have to have like exceptional everything. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's just something to think about. For me, that's not as much of a problem um, because I live in Scotland. So I did my first degree free and then medicine's only gonna cost me about two grand a year. I know everyone's gonna hate me <laughs> looking at this. <laughs> yeah, no, Scotland man, move here. Okay, so medicine with a foundation year. There are courses, not that many of them, but there are courses in the UK that have a year before you start medicine set aside to teach you kind of the basics. And it's a really good base to kind of learn from and then develop. So you do that year and then you go into a five year course or a six year course or whatever the medicine degree is at that uni. Pros, so first of all, you learn a great deal of what you're going to be learning in medicine beforehand. You grow your confidence because you start to get used to the kind of me medical language, scientific language and learning how to research and things like that and university in general to be honest. <laughs> And if you get into a foundation year course, you've basically got yourself a spot in medical school so you don't have to go through that whole emotionally turbulent time of going through the whole UCAS application all over again. You've got your spot and that's you. Cons, for me, the thought of staying in one place for seven years is a lot. You're kind of closing yourself off so even though you've got a spot in medical school, you can't go just anywhere, you have to go to that school. So I mean, that's not a big deal. It's actually a benefit for some people because it means that you get to know the kind of area 
you get to know the university itself, you get to know the buildings and the layout and where you like to study and all that kind of thing ahead of time. Okay, so access courses aren't something I had heard of until very recently, but I've been doing my research and I'll link a really good PDF thing that I found on a website in the description. So do check that out if this is something that you're considering. And the access courses are basically meant for people who are thinking of a career change. So they're kind of coming in from something else and they don't have a science background. So if you've not done science A-levels or hires, universities have basically made partnerships with a specific few colleges and those colleges have a, like an access to medicine course and you go and it'll have modules in biology and chemistry and maybe medical science, I'm not really sure. But basically those access courses have been approved by the university so that you can then apply to that university after. So it's not a guaranteed spot, but you do leave with credits from a college and the opportunity to apply. Pros, it opens new doors for mature career change type individuals. <laughs> and it's really smart if you've done your research so anyone who is looking to do this they can look ahead at the universities that take certain college courses if you know that you want to be in a certain area then you can look at what colleges they accept maybe there's some overlap there's actually a i think it's like appendix four on the pdf i mentioned at the bottom they actually have a list of all the universities that take access courses from colleges and then next to it a list of the colleges that have that course definitely check that out if this is something that you're considering the college courses are normally free or very cheap. Cons, obviously it's not suitable for those who have failed A-levels or failed to meet their requirements so it means that if you had wanted to do medicine from the beginning and just hadn't gotten the grades sorry. My other con is that it kind of limits where you can apply. So if you do a college course at a specific college, it might be that it's only one university that you can apply to from there. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is doing a degree transfer. I don't think this actually exists in Scotland. So that's where you start one degree and then you switch into medicine after normally first year. Not that many universities accept this, but there are a lot of people who will go into a degree at a university that does accept it, just kind of hoping that they will get that transfer after first year but I think that's a bit problematic because of how competitive it is. Pros, it takes less time if you manage to get that transfer so you're only doing a year and then jumping into medicine. Also if you don't end up getting the transfer you can just do another two or three years and you end up with a degree so it's not the end of the world. Cons, <laughs> it's extremely competitive so I don't know how many people go to the university hoping for that transfer but I imagine it's a lot and so the odds probably aren't in anyone's favour. It does mean that you will end up sacrificing kind of the university experience. So it means that in the time that you're at university, in that first year that you're hoping to then transfer from, you basically have to have your head down. If you do find a balance, then there's this, the friends that you make in first year are gonna kind of go down their path and then you're gonna have to start from fresh and join with people who are just joining the university, the city, which is a bit of a catch-22. It's a bit of a tricky one because normally when you're in a friend group you're just like you want to be in the same space as them they'll be doing something completely different so it would become a bit difficult to kind of maintain that the last thing is that university transfers normally don't accept transfers from other universities so the few unis that do have a transfer system where if you've got exceptional grades and work experience and all the rest of it you can jump onto the medicine course the universities only accept students from their own university so you're kind of closing yourself off you can only apply to that university so the fifth thing is something that I think people write off so fast studying medicine abroad. So there are a few universities in Europe. I know that there's definitely one in Italy that I used to get emails about because I think I looked it up once and the internet watches you. They're like accredited by the UK so a medical degree from there is you can practice in the UK with it after. GMC approved, let's call it that. <laughs> also Queen Mary Barts in London, they've got a medical school out in Malta and I saw pictures of it and I was just like, that looks like a dream. I love traveling and I love traveling on my own and meeting new people and seeing new places, experiencing the culture. And I thought four years in Malta would not be bad. <laughs> 
I do think it's a graduate entry course. Yeah, anyway, the point is there are universities that you can go and study at abroad. If you're really, really desperate to do medicine, it might be something to consider because their entry requirements are lower. Very often they don't require an entrance exam. So if it's your UCAT or your BMAT that's holding you back, I'm just gonna go through the pros and cons because I think there's actually quite a few of them. So pros, you get to experience a completely new country, way of life, learn a language maybe, and you would end up with a circle of friends there. So it would actually be really exciting if you are willing to put yourself out of your comfort zone in that way. I understand it's daunting but traveling is honestly so good for the soul. <laughs> I believe that honestly with all my heart. You can get in with lower entry requirements so you don't need to worry as much about whether your grades are like all A's or whether you have top 10% UCAT. It's just a lot off your shoulders that you don't need to worry about if you decide to apply to one of these universities. It's not done through UCAS so you can apply to the other universities and apply to one of these universities and not worry too much and they also accept applications later so if you've already been rejected you can probably still apply for that year. Cons, it is quite expensive a lot of the time. It is something that you need to think about obviously. A lot of Americans and Canadians go to the Caribbean if they don't get into medical school where they wanted to and I get it because the money for them whether they stay in the states or go to the Caribbean they're gonna be neck deep in loans it's something to consider maybe I don't know <laughs> The culture shock would be heavy, especially living somewhere where you don't know anyone and I imagine those first couple months would be a bit isolating. It's definitely something I would I would consider if I hadn't gotten a spot and still wanted to in another year or whatever. You might end up getting a spot next year, you just don't know when it comes to weighing it up. Whether you're willing to sacrifice a year and risk it and hope that you get in somewhere else. Could be an idea to maybe apply and defer and then see if you get in next year and if you don't then go. That's what I would do personally. So lastly, if you are in your last year of high school and you don't make the grades that you were hoping to, you could just take a gap year and reset. I think a lot of people just want to get started and they'll just go to university for the sake of it and they'd rather do a three year degree than risk not getting in next year or not meeting the grades next year and I get it but at the end of the day it's kind of a, it's a bit of a gamble but <laughs> I think a gap year is something that everyone should do if they're even a little bit considering it because it's not something I would have considered at the end of high school but now I took my gap year during Covid and it, I still don't regret it so I just think it's such a great way to kind of expand your horizons. I never would have started this YouTube I don't reckon unless I had taken this gap year or my blog to be honest. I did my blog at the beginning of my gap year. You've got no pressure on you for that year, you've got no obligations and you can just kind of do your thing. If it means finding a job abroad somewhere and travelling, obviously not easy for everyone right now but expand your creativity learn something new, do the resets and stuff like that as well. Actually Faye Bait has a really good video on that, I'll link it in the description. I think you learn a lot in a gap year, no matter what it is you do, whether you stay home and you study and you work and you save up, or whether you go travelling, or whether you learn a new hobby, or whether you pick up a new creative outlet. Whatever it is you do, you learn about yourself, you learn about the world, you just grow. I know that sounds so cheesy and cliche but it's just so wholesome, so wholesome and so good. You have more time to kind of consolidate what it is you want from the next however many years. So whether that's where you want to study, whether medicine is actually definitely the career for you, you can get more work experience, you can save up money. Cons. <laughs> Studying for exams you've already sat is a little bit tedious but you have a leg up so it's, it's not the end of the world. Just consider it extended spaced repetition. Some people do just want to dive in. There are a lot of universities that don't accept resets so that is something to consider. But you know, if you do your research properly, resources like the Medic Portal and the Student Room is a really good forum for kind of asking questions about specific universities and specific topics. So maybe you want to type in like medical schools that accept A level resets or something like that. And I'm sure there will be conversations on it and people do share information on there. So it's definitely worth checking out. But to be honest, other than that, I really can't think of that many cons for a gap year. I'm just like very gap year. Anyway, if you've gotten this far, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and got something from it. If you did, I'd love it if you let me know because I don't know if I'm just making videos and putting them out into a void at this point. So you love you and I'll see you next time.